Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 2nd of October of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. But first we are not going to start with the situation on the ground, we are going to discuss probably the most important updates that coming not from Ukraine but from let's say the United States of America. And the first bad piece of news for the Ukrainians is coming from the ex-president of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Today these days he reported that that if he is going to be elected as a president of Ukraine, he will stop any supply and support of any countries in the world. Especially, probably, he didn't tell us the numbers, the titles, the titles of the countries, the names and so on. But obviously he was talking also including about Ukraine. So this is the beginning of the uh, United States president election campaign. And this is the message and this is the notes that this man is going to win this uh, battle with with Joe Biden, the current president of the United States of America. As you know, Donald Trump is the Republicans and today we got another report, another joke or very black joke or how to say from another Republican in the United States of America and we're talking about Elon Musk. And today Elon Musk published his own Twitter and he's not Twitter, his post in his ex- um, like social network, he published the face of Zelensky and he marked this uh, post with the, uh, with the following text. When it's been five minutes and you haven't asked for a billion dollars in aid. This is significant humiliation of the president of Ukraine of Ukraine and uh, soldiers that currently fight for Ukraine uh, for Ukraine f in this special military operation. And you know that um, the Ukrainians start blaming Moscow, calling him as like agent of uh, Kremlin, as the main Russian propagandist and so on. So this is a very big problem. And also we know that Elon Musk uh, also is Republican. So we see the aggressive beginning of the election campaign in the United States of America. We still haven't received nothing from the Democrat Party, so I believe that they need to show something, they need to provide something and to show that they also have some power and they control, that they still control the situation. But this is not the final bad piece of news from the Western countries that Zelensky got today. Another bad piece of news um, today he got from Jose Barrel. Today this person um, there is like high representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy visited Zelensky in Kyiv. He had a meeting with him. And Barrel, Jose Barrel and Zelensky were discussing the further plans of United of European Union and Ukraine. And after the conversation, after they shared their opinions and thoughts about the situation, they made some like press release, they gave a lot of information for the press. And one of the most things they discussed is that Europe is no longer planning to provide Ukrainians 5 billion euros in this year. Maybe they will give 5 billions of euro the next year, but only this year they're planning to reach an agreement for these five billions and nobody uh, says uh, that the Ukrainians, uh, the European Union and Joseph Borrell especially are able to achieve these agreements by the end of this year. Furthermore, he reported, he told us that the European Union will continue to support and train more soldiers of Ukraine army, another 40,000 soldiers will be uh, will be trained including combat fighter pilots and probably this is the most important note and that's it so no help from Europe by the end of this year and this is a very very big problem for the Ukrainians the only country as we can see that still support Ukraine is of course United Kingdom to be more precise, the ex-Minister of Defense Ben Wallace, who continue giving us very interesting updates from his um, uh, side. Today he reported and asked Zelensky to start mobilizations among 18-20 years old youth people. Very young from very young people. We can call, uh, he asked Zelensky to start mobilization among genophant gold of Ukrainian nation. It's a very bad piece of news for the Ukrainians. We understand that currently the Ukrainians are out of reserves. Uh, we understand that 40, 50 years old men uh, can't do anything with very strong Russian soldiers, uh, with 30, 20 years old soldiers. And we understand that the Ukrainians don't have chances to win this war on the ground. Also, more bad updates are coming from Europe and now we are moving to Slovakia. Today, these days, there was an elections in the local parliament 
and uh, Robert Fitzo won the elections when talking about his party currently who want to create a coalition but this person support Russians and he doesn't support Ukrainians at all he called the Ukrainians Nazi and fascist government and fascist country so very bad piece of news and currently when talking about Europe there is a uh, Hungary who is already uh, doesn't support Ukraine and now there are two countries in European Union who doesn't support Ukraine at all so very bad piece of news for the Ukrainians and to tell the truth I'm not even sure how Zelensky and his team are going to get out of the situation some sources are saying that Western countries want to make elections in Ukraine and to force Zelensky to go away from his positions and they want to adopt someone else and to stop this conflict with the Russians obviously any any president any candidate for the chair of the president of Ukraine who will try to who will um, give his uh, um, uh, who will try to get this position uh, the main like words of this man is going to be peace agreements with the Russians and of course Zelensky and his team can't allow this we all understand this uh, furthermore these are like bad there was these uh, those were bad piece of news from the Western countries the Russians also have some surprise for the Ukrainians and while the one um, by one the Western countries refused to support Ukrainians the Russians published more details about regrouping of Wagner today more and more sources reported that significant number of Wagner forces have already been redeployed to the territory of the special military operation uh, currently according to information we have Wagner will be in charge by the son of Prigozhin his son has named Pavel he and he will in charge of this organization and he will be also on the ground he will control the situation furthermore some sources are saying that Wagner's will be redeployed in direction of Kupin's direction but today the sources are saying that Wagner's will be redeployed in direction of Avdeevka to be more precise according to some Belarusian sources uh, around 10,000 of soldiers 10,000 of stormtroopers will be redeployed in direction of Avdeevka you know that uh, when talking about direction of Avdeevka obviously I believe that uh, we are talking not just about this small industrial area as I understand the sources are saying about the entire south the next direction that starts somewhere in the vicinity of Konstantinovka Novomikhailovka and ends in the vicinity of Avdeevka if you ask my opinion uh, of course, it's not very smart to redeploy Wagner's, let's say, and to tell them you need to attack in Avdeevka and you need to start everything from the beginning, from stretch. Obviously, uh, Wagner's are stormtroopers. They are not artillery forces. They are not air forces. They are not spies. They are not reconnaissance teams. They are stormtroopers. And you need to use stormtroopers only at places you know that this area is already ready for any types of offensive operations. When talking about Avdeevka, we know that that there are no chances to storm this area or there are chances but the level of losses is going to be very heavy for the Russians for Wagner's if they attack in this direction if you ask my opinion the perfect area where Wagner can start their another trip on the territory of Ukraine is of course Novomikhailovka and the situation on the ground we're going to start with this area the Russians continue bombing and attacking this area and the most important to storm this uh, this uh, f uh, foothold the Russians continue uh, storming and clearing operation on two northern fortifications two northern strongholds by the name of Zverinians today they published significant number of bombings and attacking the Ukrainian forces in this area we had a lot of videos of significant number of casualties losses among the Ukrainians but we still haven't received any like proofs and uh, that the Russians managed to establish full control there are still Ukrainian forces uh, there are still there are not many forces Says probably maybe 20 30 maybe 100 soldiers who are stretched among the three lines among the strongholds and shelters and the only thing they do they can uh, raise up from another hole and to attack the russian tank with uh, some light vehicle so currently the russians are focused with clearing this territory with all types of weapon they have mainly with artillery systems and fpv drones but i think that in a day or two this area will be collapsed and the russians will be able to get closer to novo mikhailovka from the north Furthermore, the Russians were bombing and attacking the cities like Pabeda. We haven't received nothing from this area for a very long time. But this is the key area to continue offensive operation on the road between Marinka and Uglidar. The Russians need to capture this territory to create some base, some fortifications for concentration of forces and for further attacks deep inside in direction of Velika Novoselovka. And today there were clashes 
artillery bombings of Georgievka. Also, we haven't received almost nothing for the previous year from this area. And as soon as Marinka has almost fallen and... Uh, uh, as soon as Marinka um, like, uh, turned into the ruins, now the Russians um, moved their uh, focus further in the direction of Kurahova. So I expect, if you ask my opinion, the appearance of Wagner forces exactly in this direction. When talking about Novomikhailovka itself, the Russians continue bombing and shelling this city, this small village with five bombings. On this video we see the explosion somewhere on the edge position and the secondary detonation of a local ammo depot somewhere along the tree lines. And we see the pressure from the south. So we see a very a real offensive operation, at least the first phase, using just uh, avi aviation bombs and artillery uh, rounds, but uh, Wagner's, I believe, they will appear exactly in this direction. The Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of artillery duelists, bombings and clashes in the south Donetsk direction, the Ukrainians lost 30 soldiers, two armored vehicles and two artillery systems, probably the lowest level of losses since the beginning of the special military operation. And the main reason of that is there are no changes on the ground. The Ukrainians stopped any offensive operation, any activity, then understand that something is very important is and big is coming and now they try to dig in deeper and to prepare their fortifications before upcoming attacks of the Russian forces. When talking about Arekhov area, there are some changes, there are some interesting updates that we need to discuss. And as we discussed in the future, the Ukrainians took a decision to stop any attempts to attack in direction of Yerbova. They were completely defeated. Next video in the morning, we will discuss another video that was published by the Russian sources. There was a trend is full of Ukrainian bodies, hundreds, maybe even thousands of soldiers are laying down on this ground without any possibilities to be evacuated and to, to be sent to their relatives and friends and whatever. The situation is critical and the Russians uh, took continue pressing and the Ukrainians took a decision because of upcoming of winter and late autumn to change their focus from Verbova to Kopany. And they start concentrating their forces between Novodanilovka Kopany and between Novandriyevka Nistrianka. The Russians, of course, control everything. They see everything and they started. Uh, they redeployed their FPV operators uh, platoons somewhere in this area. And the Russians started hunting process in the, between Novodanilovka and Kopany. As a result of FPV drone strikes, a lot of light vehicles, uh, personal carriers and armored vehicles were damaged and destroyed by the attack of FPV drones. Significant number of videos, all of them are fresh and all of them are geolocated. So the Ukrainians try to concentrate their forces, but they still haven't managed to complete this mission. But today we got the first geolocated video confirmation that as a result of all these process, as of as a result of concentration, the Ukrainians managed to get some armored vehicles to the combat line and the Ukrainians started attacking the Russian positions in Kopany. One of those tanks, who the, which the Ukrainians managed to get very close to the combat line, was discovered and to destroyed by the Russian artillery strike with Krasnopol. So this is the situation between Novodanilovka and Kopany. Uh, like, uh, to be short, uh, this is the area of concentration of Ukrainian forces. Now they try to accumulate as much as possible forces and then they will attack in the direction of Kopany. The second area of Ukrainian concentration is Novandriyevka. When talking about this settlement, the Ukrainians try to concentrate and the next step is going to be attack in the direction of Nistirianka. The Russians also redeployed some FPV platoon in this area and now the Russians also hunt tried to hunt and destroy to track the Ukrainian armored vehicles between buildings in three lines that Ukrainians tried to hide during this concentration process. So the situation is not critical, but the situation is very dangerous uh, for the Russians. They need to be like, uh, they need to be very, very sharp in this direction and understand what is going on. The Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes on this direction, the Ukrainians lost um, 35 soldiers, 5 armored vehicles, including 1 Bradley and 3 artillery systems. Also, the level of losses is the lowest since the beginning of this counter-offensive operation, and we understand that currently there are no activity on the ground, just the process of concentration of forces and the process when the Ukrainians try to dig in deeper before the Russian counter-attack. Very interesting video we got from the city by the name of Romanovska. The Russians hide their artillery system Stab Somewhere among the three lines, the Ukrainians managed to discover this artillery system with drone and as a result of Heimer's strike this artillery system was destroyed. Of course it's up to you to 
think about the accuracy and effectiveness effectivity of this strike uh, I'll repeat my idea that it's very ineffective to use Heimer's missile against such a small uh, target as Mstab um, Bihovitz or probably this might be even uh, something like um, not working artillery system or something like this. Uh, another important update from the Zaporozhye direction is that the Russians currently continue the building of railway track and highway a road from Militopol to Mariupol. They have already built a lot of kilometers of, of road. They are like on the final stage of this building and as soon as the Russians are able to complete then they will secure the south of Russia currently or Ukraine for 100% from Ukraine attacks, from Ukraine harmless missiles, drones and so on. Currently the most important railroad roads goes from Militopol to Donetsk and this railway through Takma lays very close to the combat line so there are always risks to being attacked to be attacked by the Ukrainian missiles including HIMARS and uh, this year at least the Russians will secure this road and will create the necessary infrastructure to be safe and secured the next year when talking about Kherson direction there are no changes on the ground just the regular bombings with the Krasnopol and uh, like FAB 500 against Ukrainian infrastructure and facilities on the Ukrainian bank of the river now we are moving to Donetsk direction. We got a lot of very interesting updates from Bakhmut uh, Artyomov's direction and most of the updates are connected with the Ukrainian attempts to cross the railways and to force the Russians to step back further. But there is one problem. There are a lot of problems. One of the most important problems is that the forces of 93rd Mechanized Brigade who were redeployed in this area recently published in their like official telegram channel uh, a message the message that there are a lot of problems that they want their commanders to be and officers to be arrested they're saying that ukrainian authorities military authorities sent significant number of forces uh, more than 70 percent who was in the storm operation for the first time in their life most of them haven't um, got even a simple trainings so significant losses and this brigade was redeployed in direction of Klishevka a few weeks ago and currently this brigade just for two weeks of clashes have already lost its combat capabilities and the most important that that brigade was involved in attempts of the Ukrainian forces to cross the railways in the vicinity of Andreevka uh, and those attacks were made just using the infantry without support of any armored vehicles the Russians published the video of those like attempts to cross the railways we are not going to watch this video because uh, this video has shown us uh, hundreds of dead bodies of the Ukrainians along the water reservoirs, along the buildings, along the railways, significant number of losses, and those were the losses probably of 93rd Mechanized Brigade, and after such a bloody attempt to attack that gave the Ukrainians zero result, they published that material, that post, asking to start some like investigations against the Ukrainian officers who made that criminal order to send people for certain deaths. Very bad situation with the Ukrainians in this area. Today there was more updates how the Ukrainians were trying to attack the Russian positions with tanks. Probably this is an old video. A few weeks, few days ago we got the video how the Russians managed to destroy such a tank. But anyway, the situation is that Currently, the Ukrainians don't have control over Andreevka. During the previous clashes and storm operation, they managed to enter, maybe even to establish some flag to make a video. But after that, they were forced to step back and now they need to start everything from the beginning because the Russian forces who has their positions uh, under the uh, underground facilities under the railways still there and they have certain control over this territory. And every time the Ukrainians leave this area, they came back, they come back and establish new mines, new traps for the Ukrainian forces. And then they try to hide back. When talking about northern railways, the Ukrainians also tried to concentrate their forces uh, on these directions with the next purpose to cross the railways, like to make this operation, but the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainians and as a result of artillery strikes, as a result of aviation strikes, the Russians managed to destroy the uh, places of Ukrainian concentration of forces and basically both of those attacks were repelled and were ruined at the beginning of this process. We're talking about the concentration of Ukrainian army.
and the same situation on the north direction. This is the hill, the Ukrainians tried to concentrate their forces on the hill, right in front of these three lines along the, along the railways, but the Russians managed to discover them, and then the Russians launched significant artillery fire, uh, very heavy artillery fire, and as a result of that fire, the entire storm squad of Ukrainian forces was destroyed, and the Ukrainians haven't even started any movements in the direction of this railway. So another defeat of the Ukrainians in the vicinity of Klishevka. Uh, when talking about Kupinsk Liman direction, there are no changes on the ground, just regular activities, regular clashes, bombings and so on. Interesting updates are coming from Sivir's direction, uh, one of the possible directions where, according to some sources, the Russians are planning to redeploy Wagner. Today the Russians continue attacking the Ukrainian positions along the railways that goes from Vyimka to Siversk. On this video we see another Ukrainian tank that was discovered by the Russians and as a result of artillery strike that tank was destroyed. Another video we got a little bit to the south from Vyivka, a very powerful stronghold of Ukrainian forces along the uh, like uh, railway and along the three lines and as a result of significant number of drone strikes, artillery strikes, this fortification was destroyed and the Ukrainians probably were stretched in this area and were forced to step back. Uh, uh, step back. Obviously we see another area where the Russians have almost prepared the ground and road for another possible direction of attack for Wagner forces from Bilogorovka in direction of Sivirsk. This attack can allow the Russians to split this area into parts and to probably even encircle some Ukrainian forces. When talking about northern direction, we're talking Liman and Kupinsk. I'll remind you that just yesterday we discussed about the concentration of Reserve 25th Army of Russian Army with additional 17,000 soldiers uh, that also have already probably received military orders at some certain date to start the movements. So a lot of plans, as you can see, a lot of directions. And uh, when talking about Kupinsk area, today we haven't received almost nothing from this area, just the numbers of losses of Ukrainian forces, 65 soldiers per the previous 24 hours. The, probably the most important update that some telegram channels that uh, say that they have connections with the situation on the ground reported that there were very heavy clashes in the vicinity of Sinkovka and Petropavlovka. The Russians launched another offensive operation, another wave of offensive operations. We haven't received nothing from this year. I'm talking about uh, geolocations and so on, video confirmations. But anyway, it's like the situation and piece of news that we got from this territory. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.